Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you about Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, the signs and the symbols explicated. Jeffrey Leon, welcome to this edition of Satan's Strategic Command, dedicated to the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great harlot that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit and of the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed, and in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Okay, guys, uh, this passage here in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6, is an amazing passage of Scripture. It, it depicts the, 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 the occupation of hell, the final seat of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell, and arrayed at a graduating scale in accordance to their works and their proximity to the appearing of Antichrist in our world. It is the, the we know the book of Revelation it is the, depicts the consummation of the saints, and as we have the seal of eternal life um, residing upon uh, the those that have the seal of God and the, the true believers that live through the final moments of earth's history and are about to be raptured up to meet Jesus Christ in the air at his second advent and taken to the holy city. And this appears in Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 and 8. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. So the saints are seated. They have white robes, and they are they are back in union, one holy and holiness with God. And this is depicted in Hebrews chapter eight, verse ten through twelve. So, I've actually written seventeen points of reference on explicating and explaining the signs and symbols that are contained in Revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6. It's a humongous amount of information. I spent three hours copying off of previous. Uh, 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 notes that I had taken that as the Holy Spirit revealed to me the truth of what's contained in Revelation chapter 17 verse 1 through 6 and adding to that uh, what the Holy Spirit has been impressing upon my mind over the last few days. So it's an amazing passage of scripture. It is it depicts the end of our world and the end the end of all those that receive the mark of the beast and the seal of Satan upon their foreheads as, as depicted as 666 and uh, uh, the, the separation of these people from the saints of righteousness as we receive the seal of God and we are uh, about to be raptured up to meet Jesus Christ in the air. Um, it, it depicts their separation uh, from, uh, and, and it's not only their separation, but the demons of hell too. It depicts the seal of Antichrist, or the, or the spirit of Antichrist within their blood, 1 John 2, 15 through 18, 1 Timothy 6, 10, which is the, the most basic, fundamental, and, and deepest roots of Antichrist that begins within a man. It was working in John's day, but it's not perfected with the seal of Satan as, as it appears in Revelation 13, 15 through 17, until the image of the beast appears. And so we know the image of the beast had not appeared in John's day that that the the first in, and it didn't even appear within the first incarnation of the beast that lasted from 538 to 1798 the image of the beast only appears in the the beast power that appears in our time and in our day and we know that it, it has appeared because we know the image of the beast has appeared today it's pouring out the spirit of antichrist revelation chapter 14 verse 9 and 10 and it is soliciting the worship of death uh, among the population in democratic societies so Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6 is an amazing, an amazing passage of scripture. It's horrible. It's terrible. It's got a humongous amount of information that's contained in it. It was given to John as a signification. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, 
as a signification so he would never forget it. It probably made him extremely ill. Um, it, it, at the last, he says, I wondered with great admiration, but it's probably awe and amazement that that could probably be translated to at the end of, of Revelation uh, verse 6 and Revelation chapter 17. So the passage is, is incredible. It depicts the, the, the end of our world, the end of this entire world, and the end of all those that do, cannot receive the love of the truth that they might be saved, that live through the final moments of Earth's history. So, like I said, I've written 17 points of reference uh, explicating the signs and symbols contained therein, and the first two verses I haven't even touched. The, uh, the only thing, the only the only, I mean, there's four, three, there's four pages here and three and a half pages, and I haven't even touched on verse one and two. It's all verse three, four, five, and six. And so um, it's relevant to our world today because the image of the beast is actually laboring to evacuate uh, people from the presence of God, of God, 1 John 4, 16, for God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. So we know that the image of the beast is actually laboring to evacuate people from, from God's presence, which within them is the habitation of love. And we know only the habitation of love disseminates dem democracy, democratic process, and constitutional protections within our world. Uh, one or two Corinthians, two Corinthians chapter three, verse 17 and 18. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with open face, beholding in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Yeah, two Corinthians chapter three, verse 17 and 18. So we know where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And only in the full presence of Holy Father God as the foundation of love resides within men that are receive, even receiving a passive manifestation of the fruits of the life. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meat, temperance against such there's no law. That constitutionalism in its fullness is afforded to the masses by the presence of God within the United States Constitution as it is disseminated through the legislative, the, the executive, and the judicial branches of our government. And only in the presence of Holy Father God can our men allow to choose to serve him or no without penalty. Okay, only in the full manifestation of God's presence can man choose to live 120 years and lay down and lose his soul at, at when he's resurrected for judgment. It is pointed unto one unto men once to die, and after this cometh the judgment. This is according to people that are not going to live through the final moments of earth's history. So we know that that only in the presence of God, in the fullness of God's presence, as he resides, disseminating judgment, justice, and righteousness amongst the populations of our world, can men enjoy lives and enjoy the fruits of life and choose to serve or not to serve God without penalty. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. So we know that only in the presence of God can man can man choose to serve God or no without penalty. The mark of the beast has no such the image of the beast that if, that 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 is the operational capacity of the mark of the beast has no such preconceived idea. It wants to force everybody to receive the mark of the beast to serve it without discretion as they and without love, which is the very es essence of what the mark of the beast is, as it labors to evacuate people from their habitation of love. And this is basic. This is actually the the working of the image of the beast, laboring to evacuate people from the presence of God. And as it pours out the spirit of Antichrist and it solicits the worship of death among the population, and it torments people within their flesh. It, it labors to cultivate this harvest, and it labors to evacuate people spiritually from God's presence to, so it can fulfill its satanic desires. 
Job chapter 37, verse 21 through 24. And now men see not the bright light, which is in the clouds, but the wind passeth and cleanseth them. Fair weather cometh out of the north with God's terrible majesty. Touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent in power and in judgment and in plenty of justice. He will not afflict. Men do, men do therefore fear him. He respecteth not any that are wise of heart. And so as the image of the beast supplants the glory of God as the provider of the harvest for men and satanically incorporates it uh, labors to satanically incorporate its presence within the United States Constitution spiritually this is what it's doing it's supplanting the glory of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ for that of itself it's promising and we know the motive why the image of the beast sold its soul to Satan was for sexual and monetary control as manifest as the woman the harlot arrayed with, with gold, precious stone, and pearls sitting upon the image, the, the beast, which is full of the names of blasphemy, that is the manifest presence of the image of the beast. So, the image of the beast, as it is, is soliciting, it's pouring out the worship, it's pouring out the spirit of Antichrist and soliciting the worship of death, it is also simultaneously, we know, it is supplanting laboring to supplant the glory and the gospel of Jesus Christ for that of itself as the provider, as the provider for all flesh. And it, we know that it's going, it's promising sexual and monetary advancement to all flesh the, and, and protection from it, which is 100% a lie, because Revelation 14, 9 and 10 makes it absolutely crystal clear. This is 100% a lie. It's, we know that it's a lie because, uh, uh, if any man worship the beast in his image, the same shall drink of the, the wine of the wrath of God. So we know, we know that as the image of the, and we also know that as the image of the beast evacuated its habitation of love, it's also pouring out the spirit of Antichrist upon its fa immediate family members and, and extended family members that resides within its environment and in the populations, its immediate surrounding populations within its environment. So we know that nobody, everybody that, that is, is, is some people may not be, be as, as, uh, uh, you know, the, the image of the beast, I personally believe the image of the beast is, is drinking in more of the spirit of antichrist and the worship of death than anybody else. Okay, and for this very reason, it may be avoiding some of the torments that are coming upon flesh, but its extended family members are not. We know that its family members are not. We know that it left the habitation of love, and that it anybody that would solicit the 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 worship of death and death upon the children of God and the children of man has vacated their habitation, and so it labors to supplant itself as the provider. As both sexually and monetarily, as it the manifest presence of the seal of Satan resides within its heart, as made manifest by Revelation chapter 13, 17, verse 3 and 4, and the seal of Satan, Revelation 13, 15 through 17, we know that it left its habitation and it's laboring to supplant itself as not only someone that can fulfill people sexually and monetarily, but can protect them from its own presence. And, uh, as the Bible makes it absolutely crystal clear, if you look at Revelation chapter 17, verse 3, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns, protection is not protection at all. Protection is assimilation within the mark of the beast. And we know that, 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 that anybody that serves uh, the image of the beast will drink in of the spirit of Antichrist. And me personally, I think I'm better off where I'm at being outside of the environment and being on the on the on the on the happy list of the image to the beast. Uh, I'd rather be where I'm at spiritually than, than where a lot of other people are that are serving the image of the beast because they're actually laboring to to fulfill the mark of the beast within their own lives and by their own works and by the the evacuation of their affections for things that are that are righteous just and fair and true so i'm i'm absolutely happy where i'm at spiritually right now i'm 100 percent good with it so but anyway um the image of the beast is soliciting the as to to supplant the the harvest 
that God provides for all men as the provider. Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through 29. The kingdom of heaven is as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring forth and groweth up. He knoweth not how, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the, first the blade in the ear, and then after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in sickle, because the harvest is come. And Luke eight eleven, the seed is the word of God. And so as the image of the beast labors to evacuate people from the presence of God, for God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. He's actually, uh, he's he he's 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 promoting sexual and monetary advancement as the sea as he sold his soul to Satan is a parent, and he's also pro promising protection that he's not even giving to his own family members and his extended family. So that's that we know that he is inhabited. He's the inhabitation of the beast because. Revelation chapter 17, verse 3, puts the names of blasphemy, the image of the beast, with inside the beast. So, really, promises of, of sexual and monetary fulfillment by the image of the beast and protection are nothing but a lie. And he's just laboring to lure people until he can gain advantage over them and he can actually fulfill his satanic ministry to, to subjugate all flesh on pain of death. So, I believe that 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 this is what's taking place within the 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 legislative branch of our government today. It's he's the the image of the beast is actually soliciting something better. He's telling them he, that he's going to provide for them. He's going to give them protection, and he's going to advance them, and he's going to to supplant the glory of God for his own presence, and he's going to make it better for them and for their family members. When nothing could be farther from the truth, it's all a lie. We know that as Mark 4, 26 through 29 states, that when the fruit comes forth, uh, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. The same thing will happen to our legislators. Romans chapter seven, verse five, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. So it's all a lie. It's 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 it looks golden and it looks like it's a good deal, but it's 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 nothing. It's just a cup of devils and it's full of death. It's it what resides within the image of the beast is a dead soul, and uh, so this is what we're seeing. I believe this is what we're seeing as people become hooked by Ezekiel 29, one through four, people are becoming hooked. They're, they're in conversation. They're receiving the spirit of antichrist and they're believing it. They're believing it as something that is true when it's nothing but a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a golden cup full of lies and they're receiving it as true and they're vacating the habitation of constitutionalism. And they are, they are incorporating, they are promising works and to become enablers of those people that are perpetuating a lie within the United States government today. And we know the perpetuation of lies will need to lead to nothing but death, misery, pain, and destruction within our world. John chapter 8, verse 44, you're the father of devil, unless your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not, and abode not in the truth, because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh of a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is the liar and the father of it. And we know when the fruit of lies comes to full fruition, we have the death of man and men. So people that perpetuate this is people that perpetuate constant lies are this is the manifestation of the the overthrow of the United States government and constitution the habitation of love as God resides within men in our in our government and men disseminate constitutional incorporation upon the masses and and afford protections to the masses of people that rely upon democratic process, democratic liberties, and constitutional protections to live comfortable and safety and, and in safety and peaceable lives and lives. So um, I believe that's what we're seeing is happening. We're seeing people are being allured away with a lie. They're being allured away sexually, monetarily, and with the promise of protection by the image of the beast. And they are vacating their habitation of love. And this is thus we see them vacating constitutionalism within the United States of America and in becoming enablers 
for the image of the beast as they are believing the lie that the image of the beast is going to offer a new order in the United States of America and it's going to take care of people that enable it to 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 incorporate it, the worship of death into the United States Constitution. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. Revelation 13, 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship, the image of the beast should be killed. This is the full manifestation. This is the corporeal appearing of the image of the beast as the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity appears within our world as a civil power. Okay, this is the corporal appearing of the image of the beast, as and this is the labor of the image of the beast to to incorporate its spiritual presence within the United States Constitution. We know that it's laboring today to to for total blackout of free speech on a group of civil servants within our country, so the population will not cannot be cognizant that it is satanically harvesting sexually, monetarily, um, and rendering people in service on pain of death unto it. Right? So this is the first. This is the very first verse of the three verses that explicate the entire seal of Satan uh, in, in the Bible and by the gospel of Jesus Christ and the judgments and the, the glory and the magnificence of our Holy Father God. So Revelation 13, 15, we have the, the spiritual, um, excuse me, we have the physical appearance of the image of the beast and the fullness of its numbers and its operational capacity. And this is also Revelation 13, 15 is the spiritual manifestation of the seat of the image of the beast within the United States Constitution. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and 17. Once the image of the beast has obtained a measure of immunity to commit murders, to satiate itself, um, illicit, without any pretense of judgment, justice, or righteousness, just to summarily execute people in the United States democracy um, without any any judgment or or any any uh, any oversight whatsoever, just leave dead bodies rotting in cars all over the streets. Um, this is the manifestation of uh, its presence, its seal within the United States Constitution. And so we know that the image of the beast today is laboring to black out free speech on on what I believe is a million people that work for, for civil government, for local city state within the United States of America today that that have the seal of Satan in, in, in predestination within their heart. And thus they are, they're residing in judgment. They're residing in judgment of hypocrisy unto death on women, children, and unborn children. So we know absolutely that these people are, they vacated. They are no longer in the habitation of God. They've left their habitation and they're soliciting the worship of death and they're pouring out the worship of death and they're tormenting people in their flesh and they're laboring to reap a harvest of death on their own families and extended families. So this should give people a really serious warning sign. So the, the appearing of the image of the beast and its full operational capacity and numbers as it appears in Revelation 13, 15, causes the mark of the beast to fall upon all flesh. Revelation 13, 16 and 17. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So the image of the beast is laboring to appear in corp it's it's already appeared in corporeal form. We know that. But it's laboring to manifest Revelation 13, 15, its appearance in the United States Constitution, and it's laboring to manifest its physical appearance within false apostate Christianity, within the bodies of Christ, within the bodies of believers that are by God's miracle working power, even though they may be perpetuating false doctrines. They are still residing in mercy and grace because Jesus Christ is, is today is in the heavenly sanctuary and the most holy place administering mercy and grace to people that are, that are not magnifying the full glory of God in their lives, however that may be. The Bible says all men lie against the glory of God, whether by, whether it's false doctrine or whether it's sinning against God. So Jesus Christ today is in the heavenly sanctuary ministering mercy and grace upon the body of Christ. But the image of the beast is laboring to supplant 
the glory of Jesus Christ for, for the worship of itself within the body of Christ by becoming, by soliciting what I believe is a religious tax, which causes the mark of the beast and the worship of death to be incorporated within the body of Christ and the falling away that Paul predicted in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So, the image of the beast is laboring for it, as it has appeared in corporeal form today, it's laboring to incorp the seal of Satan as manifest in part in Revelation 13, 15 into the United States Constitution. And it's laboring to incorporate its presence and subvert and supplant the glory of Jesus Christ for that of itself within the body of Christ and raising up false apostate Christianity that relies upon it for monetary sustenance and its presence to uphold their power to control the economies of the entire world. Okay. And thus we have the, the mark of the beast verse 16 and 17 of the seal of Satan. Uh, that is the second part of the seal of Satan that appears in revelation 13, 15 through 17 is the corporeal appearing of the image of the beast within the bodies of Christ, raising up a dead body, uh, uh, false apostate Christianity within the body of Christ, uh, supplanting the glory of God for that of itself, uh, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 11 through 13, and incorporating the worship of death into the body of Christ. So it's terrible. It's, 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 uh, I personally believe the image of the beast will is laboring to to make manifest. It it will within all the false apostate bodies, once it believes that it can start channeling uh, funds out of local, city, state, and federal funds out of the from the government into the bodies of Christ. It will personally it will labor administratively to appear in every single congregation that is receiving of these funds and is no longer relying on Holy Father God for their harvest in their lives, both spiritually and monetarily. Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through 29. The kingdom of heaven is as if a man should cast seed into the ground. And we know that those that preach of the gospel by, by the word of God are those that live of the gospel. They receive their financially of this harvest as they edify people with the truth of God's word. So, The image of the beast we know is is it's constantly perpetuating lies. It's trying to confuse the entire the entire population as to what is true and what's going on within the government today. And it's it's people are confused because there's so many lies are being uh, perpetuated. And how do I, yeah, there are so many lies are being perpetuated by the government and people. I believe the, the lies are coming from people that are enabling the image to the beast and are trying to incorporate the, the seal of Satan within the United States Constitution and within the hearts spiritually of those that it's trying to make manifest as false apostate Christianity as she appears in Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. And this will allow the fullness of the appearing of the corporeal body of the image of the beast, not only in the general public, to, to commit murders uh, summarily, but it will it'll afford them administrative positions within the body of Christ to it, I don't believe that they will appear actually at worship services. I just believe that they will appear basically we could say on paper as people that are administrators within these bodies and that have legal right and title to the funds that are coming from the government into these churches that have exchanged the glory of Jesus Christ and the harvest of Jesus Christ as it is 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 given to every single per person in this country by the manifestation of the fruit of the spirit the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering gentleness of faith meekness temperance against such there is no law it will supplant this within the body of Christ and it will actually it will actually uh 
Obadiah makes it clear that they're going to just steal. The, they're going to eventually, they're going to, uh, Mark chapter 5, verse 13 makes absolutely crystal clear that once it, it can summarily execute people without summarily in the United States, it doesn't need anybody in the body of Christ. It can, and actually, it won't. Once the harvest stops coming in, once Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20 through 22, once the harvest stops coming in financially, the image of the beast can take those people that were residing and that were administrators that enabled it that appear in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4 as the gold, precious stone, and pearls. It can take these enablers at these, these, these denominations, these unknown denominations, and replace them with people. Instead of getting 40%, it can get 96% and make people happy. 96% of $8 million. I mean, 4% of $8 million, you know, is, will be enough for plenty of people if, as long as it's free. It's, I mean, you know, so it's, it, the image of the beast is not looking for anybody in the body of Christ to bring forth a harvest of righteousness. We know that it's, it's deliberately promoting and promulgating lies, a, ecclesiastical fraud to civil powers, and it's continually promoting organized crime and and the 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 manifestation of a religious tax to ecclesiastical powers to create this union that's built on that's going to be founded upon the seal and the operational capacity of the image of the beast and the seal of Satan that resides within its heart and as it labors to manifest the the spiritual manifestation of its physical presence within the United States Constitution and within the hearts of those that reside within false apostate Christianity that will serve it, right? So it's a it's a very bad deal. These are, are really bad people, and they're, they're just continually, continually lying and perpetuating lies to, to, to make people confused to what is the truth. I personally believe the image of the beast became cognizant of the multiplicity of lies that, that are being promoted within the body of Christ, the majority of the body of Christ in the United States today. And when it, as it did so, it became cognizant that people, the masses are really, they're disenfranchised from reality and they're disenfranchised from reality because of the multiplicity of lies against the glory of God being promoted in the majority of the body of Christ. And that's and this this disenfranchisement from reality is actually a distorting their perception of what is true. John seventeen three, for God and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Two Thessalonians chapter two, where we have the appearing of Antichrist by explicated by John, we actually have we actually have God allowing people to abide within a lie. And that's what the mark of the beast is. It's the evacuation of love. It's the evacuation of the, of the, the spirit of God from the temple of God, which is man, and the habitation of what is ful the fulfillment of a lie, the seal of Satan. It's people serving the image of the beast without discretion and without love. And that's what it's laboring to do on pain of death is to take people captive so it can fulfill its sexual and monetary desires as it sold its soul to Satan. And it goes out and it, it perpetuates this lie that resides within its own heart to our legislators and uh, the executive branch of the government and our judiciary. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, after Paul predicts the falling away of mercy and grace and the rise of false apostate Christianity, he states, 2 Thessalonians 2 chapter 8 verse 12, And then that wicked shall be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even whom, him whose coming is after working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe, believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but have but had pleasure in righteousness. And I personally believe that mercy and grace is sufficient for men to still abide within righteousness, to abide within the full presence of God as mercy and grace is imputed upon them, even though we all, we, the Bible makes it clear, we're all lying against the glory of God. And 
shall, the Bible says, where sin does abound, grace does much more abound. And this is the judgment of hypocrisy that the, the image of the beast is as abiding in within its own heart as it justifies itself as the usurper, the, the usur, uh, usurper of constitutionalism in our country and its right to dominion and satanic captivity of all flesh. And it's actually a denial of of Jesus Christ's ministry in the heavenly sanctuary, making men righteous in his presence while they are lying against the glory of God. Okay? So the image of the beast is not offering anything better to the United States Constitution. The only thing it's offering is captivity in fullness and service unto death to fulfill its satanic, sexual, and monetary desires. And just because the gospel, the, the majority of the body of Christ today is perpetuating lies against the glory of God does not mean that men cannot disseminate righteousness, judgment, and justice within their lives. And for the image of the beast to claim that this is the whole reason it claims. It, it claims, and then it goes out and it perpetuates this lie further to keep people in captivity at certain levels of 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 in service to him and that's what it will continue to do as it it perceives itself to be the the you know the the right to rule and this is exactly what lucifer did in isaiah 14 12 through 14 how art thou fallen from heaven o son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations for that how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation of the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. And this is exactly what the image of the beast, the beast is doing today. It's trying to supplant and overthrow democratic constitutionalism as it is incorporated to the masses, and it is attempting to, to supplant and to incorporate the seal of Satan into the United States Constitution and into the hearts of false apostate Christianity to render people in service to it on pain of death. And it's nothing but satanic captivity on pain of death. The seal of Satan in Revelation 13, 15 through 17 makes that absolutely crystal clear. And I personally believe that the bodies of Christ, any, any body of Christ that supplants the glory of God for that of the image of the beast and takes federal subsidies that is apparently apparent, a religious tax, and cause and is the cause of the mark of the beast the seal of satan is a manifestation naturally of the seal of satan that's coming upon their congregations within their hearts i personally believe that any any church that accepts federal subsidies from the image to the beast as it's it's perpetuating organized crime in this manner today because it's 100% illegal the founding fathers of this country knew they knew what the first incarnation of the beast did, they know what the body of Christ will do once they perceive that they can control people, the, the economies of the entire world econo economically in a false manifestation of righteousness. They know what they'll do. And it's already happened once. And that's the first incarnation of the beast. And that's why they put in the United States Constitution, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion. Okay, and this is what the image of the beast is trying to supplant within our world today. And I personally believe that any church that accepts federal subsidies from the image to the beast will need armed guards at every service that they hold in, in bodily form in, in their churches. And simply for the fact, because I personally believe the image of the beast is laboring today to cut off all welfare. As, you know, the budgets are tight. I, I can see it happening now. The image of the beast is laboring right now today to cut off all the federal welfare programs upon all the lower classes that it is actually soliciting to serve it and telling that it's going to take care of them today. And that it's actually utilizing as enablers 
to to torture and torment people, the government and the flesh of the government and their families. And it's I personally believe that if the image of the beast it occupies the United States Constitution, one of the first things that it will do is it will disenfranchise people from constitutionalism and it will disenfranchise people from federal subsidies in the form of federal welfare to render people in service unto it for sexual and monetary control as uh, the glory of the world. It's supplanting the glory of the world for the glory of itself. And it wants to be the provider while it tells everybody it's going to take care of them. It's actually laboring to take every single thing away from them. And we see this in Revelation chapter 18, verse 6. Reward her even as she rewarded you, double under her, double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. Here is the manifestation of what is going to take place in the kingdom of Babylon. Everybody that is an enabler and is a servant to the image of the beast, God is going to render double upon you. And so I personally believe that the image of the beast will disenfranchise certain classes of people from the incorporation of constitutionalism as it is applied today, and it will to subjugate people sexually and monetarily, and I believe federal welfare will be one of the first programs that gets axed once the image of the beast sets its seal in whatever measure within local city, state, and federal constitutions. So the body of Christ will be, I personally believe, that to keep the funds coming in, the image of the beast will supplant the federal welfare programs for that of the love that's supposed to be residing within all those in the body of Christ that have allowed federal subsidies and the image of the beast within their congregations. So it's basically what it's going to do. It's becoming apparent to me now what it's going to do. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to harvest death in your congregations. And it's doing it today. It's going out today and it's blaming false apostate Christianity for perpetuating the lies of Satan within their churches as they really, they're just a bunch of hypocrites. It's judging everybody in hypocrisy. It's judging women, children, and the unborn as worthy of death and not worthy of its magnificence and its greatness in the United States today. Okay? So it's obvious, it's apparent to me that, that the image of the beast, the, the more it incorporates the once the seal of Satan comes and it has established itself on the payroll of false apostate Christianity, it's literally going to do everything it can to reap the harvest of death within every single church that's re receiving federal subsidies. And it's going to do so to make sure that those funds keep coming in no matter what. It's going to harvest death specifically to keep itself on the payroll and to make sure it resides in close proximity to everybody that it's rendering service to it. So it's doing it to everybody. It's not just doing it. I mean, people can look at, at what God has predicted that, that the people of the world will become angry at the, the, the people that receive the seal of God and want to exclude them from their presence. But what's going to happen to people that receive the mark of the beast is going to be double. Okay, God makes that absolutely crystal clear. And the fact that Satan, he doesn't like anybody. He doesn't, he doesn't make friends with flesh. He has no desire for anybody to be cognizant of his presence and in their environment. Okay, and that's his manifestation of his war against the glory of God. And so he doesn't want anybody. He doesn't, he doesn't like anybody. And the image of the beast is no different because the image of the beast has the seal of Satan and it's the highest operational capacity of death's residence within man as it labors to supplant the glory of God for that of itself, not only in the United States Constitution, but within the body of Christ to raise up false apostate Christianity to make sure that it now is the glory of the world monetarily and sexually. And it'll kill anybody it has to to do it. It's making that absolutely crystal clear today as it pours out the spirit of Antichrist 
and it labors to kill indiscriminately our women, children, and unborn today. It's doing that today. So anybody that believes that, that the image of the beast is going to make better, your te make your life better, you're just telling yourself a lie because when this comes to the full, as the prof prophecies predict in whatever measure, when it comes to the full, you'll be held captive to it. And everybody that enables the image of the beast, it ain't going to be good. It ain't going to be good. If the image of the beast don't get you and Satan don't get you, it's it'll God will get you at the last day because the Bible makes that. I've been preaching on this all year long in 2020. So uh, I personally believe the image of the beast as as is judging the masses in hypocrisy for not being able to discern truth. It's deliberately perpetuating lies to disenfranchise people from reality, so they cannot discern what is true. And it's laboring to do this to evacuate people from the habitation of God, for God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him, and incorporate its presence as the glory of God into the United States Constitution and into the body of Christ as manifest by the seal of Satan, Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. So it's a really bad deal. These are, this is the manifest, the, the, the image of the beast has appeared. It is, we know that it's laboring to, to manifest its, the fullness of its numbers and its operational capacity today, and that this will bring the judgment of God. It'll bring, once the image, once the image to the beast begins sexually abuse of the children of God and the children of man, God's, look at what he did to me. God's will, judgment will come. It will be without mercy and without, it'll be brutal without mercy and with respect of persons. The harvest will come to the full. Harvest deaths will come to the full. It'll culminate with the second advent of Jesus Christ. And then that wicked shall be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of mouth, with the spirit of his mouth and the brightness of his coming. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 22. Speak, thus saith the Lord, even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field and, in the, and, and as the handful after the harvestman. I mean, look what God allowed the image of the beast to do to me. I've been going through this for 28 years with them. Okay? They've been torturing my flesh for 28 years trying to stop the glory of God from being made manifest in my life. Okay, and they're very brutal. They're very cruel. And, you know, God can start over. God is not going to allow the image to the beast to violate his children forever. And the Bible makes it very clear. He'll separate. He'll, he'll manifest the seal of God, which he's, he's administering today upon the righteous and those that want to habitate in love. He'll manifest the seal of God. He'll manifest, he'll set the wicked apart for exclusion with the mark of the beast and judgment will fall and the final harvest of death will occur and the saints will ascend to meet the Lord in the air at the second advent of Jesus Christ. So let it be written, so let it be done. So I just want to make clear that anybody that enables, that believes that the, 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 the occupation that, that, how did I write this? I wrote this down here. That that the image of the beast is offering them something better as it labors um, and it occupies satanic captivity and that it's offering you something better to perpetuate lies and to overthrow the United States Constitution. That is, that is a golden cup. That's the kingdom of Babylon residing within your presence and your consciousness, because if you believe that lie, you're descending into the pit. You're descending into further and further into a pit of lies. You're becoming an enabler, and it's it's not going to get better. Trust me. You may live. It may for a moment. It may. They they may. You have may have a a small brief second of 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 respite, but uh, God is God, and He will be God. And he grants life, and he's the only person that has the right to take it away without without being abiding in in sin.
Man is the only way man, you know, God allows men to take lives. God says that whosoever sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For the image of God made he man. Genesis chapter 9, verse 5 and 6. God even allows the execution of animals that kill human beings. It is 100% lawful for the government to execute people that take other people's lives. And, but God is the creator, sovereign, source, and sustainer of all life. And when God kills people and allows the harvest of death to occur, there is no sin in that. That is 100% righteous judgment. And it's the manifestation of God warning people. Death's presence. People are cognizant. Even a natural man is cognizant when the neighbors start dying of contagious infectious pulmonary diseases people start becoming cognizant hey death's around here <laughs> it's around here and the image of the beast is the personification it's the mirror re mirror reflection of sin in its fullness that resides within man and it's the manifestation of death's residence and occupation and permanency within our world okay so enabling the image of the beast and to to take say to and to invalidate constitutionalism for the lower classes and to alienate people from constitutionalism in this country is 100% a bad deal because God knows what people are doing he knows why he knows when people leave the habitation of love and he knows that he knows where satan's seat is and he knows what the image, he knows everything the image of the beast is doing. And all it, as, as a wise man once said, all it takes for evil to prosper is for good men to do nothing. Okay? And the law is 100% safe, effective, and curative to the image of the beast cultivating the mark of the beast within the United States today. The law will 100% the application of the law upon the image of the beast for iniquity, transgression, and sin, 100% is curative. Safe, effective, and curative for the mark of the beast, the seal of Satan that resides within its soul. In Romans chapter 7, verse 12 through 14, the law is holy. And the commandment, holy, just, and good, was then that which is good made death unto me. God forbids sin, that it might appear sin, working death, in, working death in me by that which is good. God's presence 100% can cure the seal of Satan as it resides within the mark of the beast today. All it has to be is applied by our government and taking the necessary steps to identify the enemy, identify the enemy, and then capture him. That's all it takes. And all they got to do is start locking them up, start ca start catching them, start locking them up, and it'll cure the problem overnight. Okay, but that's the thing. The, the government's not. They're not. They haven't identified the enemy. That's the problem. There's an enemy, and the enemy is resident within the United States government, government, local city state. Okay, the federal government needs to realize this and they need to start taking dramatic measures to cure this darkness of the satanic criminal psychopathology that's becoming operational within local city governments. As, as the image of the beast labors to perpetuate lies so it can invalidate, it can evacuate men from the habitation of love, evaluate, excuse me, invalidate constitutionalism and satanically harvest people sexually and monetarily in our country on pain of death. So Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6 is the culmination of these works by the image of the beast. And Revelation 13, 15 through 17 is the seal of Satan as it resides today in predestination within the image of the beast as it pours out the spirit of Antichrist and it solicits the worship of death into our world. It's an amazing passage of scripture and there's... I've written, like I said, guys, I've written 17 points of reference on this passage, and I haven't even touched on verse 1 and 2. I've, that's only 3, 4, 5, and 6. There's more. There's a lot more. <laughs> There's a lot more. This is the sixth the sixth consecutive lesson I've done in December 2020, 
2020. And this is actually, I didn't touch on Revelation chapter. Uh, well, I did. I mean, the, word, the image of the beast is the manifestation of, uh, and the seal of Satan is the manifestation, and the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity and its works is the manifestation of the names of blasphemy that reside within the, the beast that appears in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3. So and and its works are becoming manifold and charismatic and 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 actually uh, it's pouring out the spirit of Antichrist upon the entire United States population everywhere it goes passively and directly it's it's directly and passively it's soliciting the worship of death attempting to take sexual and monetary control ha evacuate people from the habitation of love by 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 service to it and by tormenting people passively in their flesh. And to see its itself spiritually in the United States Constitution, so it can it can steal the glory of the world through false apostate Christianity and the civil powers today. So, Jeffrey Leona, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel to receive notifications of future installments. And remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 15. Thank you.